concussions. I've had more than 19 concussions. 19 that I know of. One of the things we've been working on here at PAST are protocols to reverse or lessen the symptoms that are related to post-concussion issues. We're three years into our treatment program with Ray and it's great that he's thriving and now he's a vital part of our organization. I'm gonna say this, in the future, this room ain't big enough for what's gonna be coming this way. I call it sponge head or a fog head. It just doesn't go away. I wake up every morning and I go, please don't. And I open my eyes and there it is again. I'm like, I just can't. It starts to just become so overwhelming that I started to plan like, you know, kind of uh, killing myself. Let me tell you about my new favorite case, Gene Merlino. I get a call from Ray Lucas the other day. And he says, I know that we don't do a lot of college cases, but you got to see this guy. I know you can help him. Dude, you've been a Great, so I can't thank you enough for your generosity, you know? Yeah, but it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Thanks, brother. There's number 60, Bill Schleiden, right there. Number 60. He played football at West Point. He sustained, I think, a total of 13 concussions. Okay. Landed him in Walter Reed for five weeks and was discharged from the Army for concussions related to football. He is a father of three children, happily married, and up until like a year and a half ago, there were no issues. And then all of a sudden, like, the significant brain fog. I just feel um, clouded. I feel fog. Like, I feel bogged down. That pushed him into drinking. He drinks every day. When I'm able to either, like, have a few drinks, let's say, by 11 o'clock, I have a drink or so, then it, then it starts to like drain the sponge, if you will, and I sort of like come out of it and I become clearer. And repetitive suicidal thoughts. He gets very dark and he says things and he sends texts to me that almost sounds like a madman at times. I found him in the garage and I thought he was gonna hang himself and he locked the door to the garage and he was standing on the workbench and he's looking up at the rafters and he just had, it's like this deadness in his face. And, you, and I'm banging on the door and I'm walking around outside my house trying to get into the garage and he's standing there looking at me. It's like he doesn't even see me. It's like this deadness. It's just not me. That's what's interesting. I mean, it's like there are certain parts that actually get taken over. Getting too late for a team like Army was uh, an incredible honor. I was only a prep player. What are the guys that, you know, worked their asses off all week to get, you know, the big time players uh, prepared for each game. Got to used to take a pounding. You know, I started getting concussions every, you know, every practice, you know, uh, I, I mean, I could look right in the, in the mirror and see I had no color in my eyes because my pupils were so dilated, throwing up all over. I couldn't even, I didn't have enough strength to even get out. So I used to throw up like in one area and try to roll over and lay away from it. And I just couldn't move. In an institution here where it's all about battle, it's about you gotta understand, you know, they, they talk to you here, you know, you, you know, you get wounded in combat, you're with your brothers, you're, you know, you're, you fight on, you drive on. That's what he was doing. Junior year, we played at Northwestern. I ended up receiving a short kick, and saw a lot of daylight, and it probably the biggest hit I've ever taken. That hit did it to the where he just couldn't cope anymore with it. The pain, I mean, it was just, he couldn't even function. And back then, nobody, you didn't know about this. People didn't understand and what would happen long term. You know, when it started to really start to hit him here in our middle age, um, it's unbelievable to see what this, is, what this has done and what it's doing to his family. Uh, you know, uh, the drinking, the alcohol to deal with the pain, it's unbelievable. He's got to look at this past program as the single greatest challenge in his life. It's, this is about your family, you know, it's, it's about his wife and his kids. And, and he's got to take it that way, he's, or, or, you know, or he won't be around.
What's up, up cat? Homeboy? How, How are, are you? you? Good to see you. My I'm wife, Kelly. 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 How are you, honey? <laughs> you kept telling me since we met, she doesn't get it. Talking about you, she doesn't get it. And I said, yeah, she's not supposed to get it. You know, you, you don't even know who he is anymore. I said, and how do you, do you know who you are? Jane, do you know who you are? And he's like, I don't know, I turned into this other guy. It's the hardest thing for any wife to go through, to see your husband suffer, and there's nothing you can do to help him. But I will tell you this, I will tell you this, the man that you married is in there, somewhere. You and see if him he, every now and then. Yes, <laughs> and if he follows the process, you'll, you'll see the transformation. To be totally honest with you, 99% of the guys that come through this program, their wives leave. The fact that your wife is sitting next to you, you're already blessed. You're of the minority, you know? It takes a really, really strong woman to stand next to somebody who's in a self-destructive phase. It's tough. Yeah. So, trust me, you're a lot stronger than you think you are. I love I you. I All love right? you too, Bill. Thank you for everything. Thank you. It's gonna be good. Thank He's you. in the right place, honey. I'm proud of you. It's not an easy thing to do. Gene and Terry have become the two desperados here at Past. It's all in good fun, man. Even if you can't have yeah. fun, what the f sense, you know? Yeah. We still need to build enough trust in Terry that he'll open up about his meth use. You know, with our head trauma, we do things that we don't even understand. Yeah. I'm like one of those 1.75 liters of vodka. I'm doing one of them a day. This is like real head trauma stuff. I don't think I've seen a case this severe. Wow. I'm not. No, no bullshit. That's I've seen a lot so. of. That's saying something.